is March. Thank you. It is March 26, 2024. This is a regular meeting of the CRC Community Resources Committee, and it is 631. I'm going to go around and see if everyone can hear us and be heard. Uh, I'll start with Councillor Haneke. Present. Jennifer Taub. Present. Pat DeAngelis. Present. Pam Rooney's present and she can hear herself and everyone else. And I have Dave Zomack, our host, Christine Brestrup, Director of Planning, and Stephanie Ciccarello, Director of Sustainability. And here is our last member. Rebecca, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Excellent. Good. Good. So um, we are going to go to, uh, there are no public hearings tonight. We are going to go to public comment, and then we will get into our agenda with Christine and Stephanie. Let's see if there are folks in the audience. And I am not, here's my list, okay. Okay, so we'll open this up for public comment. You are, you are, have the opportunity to speak for three minutes. And oops, I forgot to hold on. I forgot to do the uh, pursuant to Chapter 20, the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 and 107, the Acts of 2022, and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the member the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No per no in-person attendance of members of the public is possible, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately ac access the proceedings in real time via technological means. As we go to public comment, uh, public comments are strictly on matters within the jurisdiction of the CRC, and folks are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes. Um, we will not be able to engage in any dialogue or comment on matters raised during public comment. Are there folks who would like to speak? Please raise your hand if you would. I see 16 participants in the audience. I do not see any raised hands yet. Jennifer? I think there's eight in the audience and eight of us. You're right. Together, but eight audience. Or eight in the, in the audience. I see yeah, no I'm, hands. I'm not seeing any hands. Not seeing any hands either. Thank you. Uh, we are going to proceed then with our action items. And we have a quick topic of just an update for CRC members on the ZBA. If Jennifer, you want to do that, we will then move on to the solar bylaw. Okay. Um, we have uh, seven interviewees that have confirmed. We had eight CAFs and one of the uh, applicants um, is uh, indicated that uh, they are pursuing, um, they're applying to other committees. So withdrew from ZBA. So we have seven candidates that we'll be interviewing a week from today on April 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Um, unfortunately, we could just not find a date when the seven candidates and the five of us could could be there on the same time on the same date. So uh, Mandy very graciously um, agreed that she will listen to the, so next week we will do the interviews, but we will not deliberate and we will not vote. And Councillor oh. Handicke said that she would listen. Ooh, do we have enough time, time, time out, actually, Jennifer. I'm sorry. I got an email from from. Oh, uh, oh there's an update. Yes, yeah. <laughs> there me? is my my conflict as of today. I got notified is getting moved, so I can actually make next Tuesday's meeting. That's a mirror. Oh, so uh -huh. we do have twelve people make it at this be at the same place at the same time. Okay, that's great because I hadn't informed the 
candidates yet that we would not be deliberating next week. So that'll be great. Although, so we'll probably need the full 6.30 to 8.30. Mm -hmm. If you could make that time available, great. We will have the interviews, we will deliberate and we'll vote. As of Perfect. now, that's great. Thank you. That is good news actually get it all in one evening while, while our recollections are fresh. Yeah. Okay. I would like to introduce again, Christine Brestrup, Director of Planning and Stephanie Ciccarello, Director of Sustainability, who very nicely offered to um, give us an overview of the process that they have worked through with the Solar Bylaw Working Group to put together the draft solar bylaw that we've received. And I wanna turn it over to the two of them to give us the information that they'd like to share. Thank you so much, Pam. I'm going to start and I will give a background of the process, what led us um, to this process. And then Chris will take over and actually talk more about the actual um, development process of the bylaw. So um, there was a uh, there was a project that was proposed on Shutesbury Road, which was kind of an unprecedented solar project uh, in terms of scale, and it proposed 50 acres of clearing. And at that time, there was a um, a movement to impose a solar moratorium on solar development, and that motion had uh, failed was defeated, it didn't pass. So there was concern regarding um, forest and other land use uh, impacts that prompted some investigation into development of an actual solar bylaw. And there were many entities that were creating drafts kind of simultaneously. So several different folks were working on drafts. So staff recommended that there be a more unified process with various groups being represented so that it would be um, those groups that had an interest in solar development could be represented. And so uh, that prompted the town manager to establish a working group, a solar bylaw working group, and worked with, um, with me specifically um, to develop the charge. And the charge was then shared with the planning director, Chris Brestrup, who also commented and added and amended the charge. Um, so I'm going to very quickly read the charge, which isn't very long. I'm not reading the entire thing, just kind of the, the crux of the charge. Um, the charge of the Solar Bylaw Working Group is to develop a solar zoning bylaw and establish a clear process and guidelines to support the permitting, siting, and construction of solar projects, including battery storage, in a way that protects the health, safety, and welfare of community members, the environment, and natural resources. To develop the solar zoning bylaw, the solar bylaw working group will engage the community to ascertain community values, identify criteria and standards to be used in reviewing and permitting proposed, um, proposed solar installations, including battery storage, and identify and prioritize locations for possible solar development, including large scale ground mount, rooftop, and parking lot canopies. The Solar Bylaw Working Group that convened consisted of seven members uh, representing the Planning Board, Energy and Climate Action Committee, Conservation Commission, Water Supply Protection Committee, and three unaffiliated community members that had relevant knowledge and or expertise. The Solar Bylaw Working Group met from June 22nd until November 23rd. Originally, their charge was to uh, disassemble by May 31st of 23, but uh, they required extensions and were granted extensions to continue the work. The town eng engaged um, GZA Geo Geo Environmental Inc. to conduct a community-wide solar assessment. Various outreach efforts included dissemination of a survey both online and in person. Outreach sessions were held at the Jones Library with interpreters, child care, and snacks. And the survey of community members yielded over roughly 500 responses. Um, and we want to acknowledge that while this was a healthy response rate, it did lack diversity um, in terms of the respondents. The reports that were provided uh, as required by the charge were the townwide solar assessment report and as well as a mapping tool. It's an interactive mapping tool that 
was developed that shows the feasible location for solar development in town. It doesn't say exactly where it can go. It just shows the feasibility of solar development. Both these tools can be accessed on the town's sustainability dashboard under reports. And then also the third and final requirement of the charge was to develop the draft solar bylaw. And with that, which came out in December 23, I will turn that over to Christine Brestrup and she can continue with the process. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Brestrup, Planning Director. And I'd like to talk to you about how the solar bylaw was drafted. Um, the solar bylaw working group met um, week bi-weekly but for about 18 months. Um, and we began by reviewing solar bylaws that were um, developed by Mass DOER, which is Department of Energy Resources, by the Cape Cod Commission and by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. We also reviewed about 12 to 14 solar bylaws from other cities and towns to get a sense of what other communities were regulating and how they were organizing their bylaws. We were also mindful of the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 3, which states that no zoning ordinance or bylaw shall prohibit or unreasonably regulate the installation of solar energy systems or the building of structures that facilitate the collection of solar energy, except where necessary to protect the public health, safety, or welfare. This section of the uh, Mass General Laws um, is similar to the protections given to um, religious and educational institutions. Um, so one of the first things that our group did was to draft a list of topics that we thought should be contained in the solar bylaw. Um, in general, we focused on large scale ground mounted solar installations as opposed to smaller ground mounted installations or solar on rooftops or on parking lot canopies, so we did not focus on those. The large-scale ground-mounted installations are considered to be no less than one acre and to have a rated nameplate capacity of 250 kilowatts DC or more. During our um, drafting, we consulted an attorney at KP Law, which is the town's legal counsel, to determine the types of things that a solar bylaw can regulate and the things that we should refrain from regulating. And the attorney was guided by recent case law. Among other topics, the Solar Bylaw Working Group spent a lot of time thinking about and discussing two relatively controversial topics. The first one was how to regulate large-scale solar installations proposed on farmland. And the second was how to regulate large-scale solar installations in forested areas. We consulted experts on the topics of agriculture, agrivoltaics, forestry, and water quality. And we drafted the bylaws section by section and reviewed sections in an iterative process, wherein we, re we reviewed a new section at a meeting and then went back and confirmed the review of a previous section. We heard comments from many members of the public. Um, among these were Scott Cashin, an expert on the impact of solar installations on the environment. He had recently moved to Amherst from California and he had worked on a lot of large scale solar projects out in California. We also heard a lot from the residents of Shootsbury Road who did um, a fair amount of research themselves and they sent us the research that they found. Um, they are in the neighborhood that Stephanie mentioned earlier where there is a large scale solar installation that is proposed and that is still being considered by the Zoning Board of Appeals and also the Conservation Commission. Um, in addition to these people, we heard comments from a resident of South Amherst, Steve Roof, who's a professor at Hampshire College and he helps to manage the solar installation at Hampshire College and he's a member of the Energy and Climate Action Committee. So we heard from a wide range of uh, individuals um, a lot of the comments that we heard and received were incorporated into the draft bylaw. The draft that we presented to town council and that you're beginning to work on was really developed by the solar bylaw working group and the experts that they consulted, but it was not reviewed by the building commissioner, the wetlands administrator, <clears throat> who also advises the conservation commission, the fire department, the sustainability director, even though um, Stephanie was 
part of all of our meetings, she didn't really, um, you know, there wasn't an opportunity for her to offer comments on this bylaw. So we think that we need to get comments from Stephanie and also um, the town attorney from KP Law. So KP Law provided advice and answers to specific questions during our process but they haven't had an opportunity to review the entire bylaw and make recommendations. Um, so we recommend that review of the draft and comments by all of these entities, as well as by the planning board, the Energy and Climate Action Committee and KP Law be incorporated along the way so that when we bring the bylaw back to town council, it has the benefit of the review and comments from all of these entities. And we look forward to working with you on this important project. Thank you. We look forward to working with you on this important project. Appreciate your uh, your expertise in it, uh, having worked on it for 18 months or so, uh, will be really beneficial. Um, does anyone in the, on the committee have specific questions before we talk about perhaps um, rolling this out and our strategy for accomplishing it? I have a question. Oh, Mandy, go ahead. I I guess I don't have a question per se. I have a lot of concerns um, as it relates to, and this I hope the council will talk about more tomorrow's um, retreat, but my concerns are based on how much time not just reviewing this, but frankly, rewriting a lot of it might take, given all of the recent uh, Attorney General's Municipal Law Unit opinions that have come out um, and the need for what I see a KP Law extensive review. Um, in reading this, it's very vague. I'm not sure if I was a ZBA member, how I would go about making a determination on it. I think there's things that conflict in it. So I think it needs a whole lot of work. Um, and I'm concerned about the amount of time that will take and whether the council in particular, and this is where it goes to tomorrow's conversation and may go to tomorrow's conversation, where the department should be spending or where we want the department to be spending its time given that I know this is listed as one of the goals in the manager's goals but so is a lot of zoning for housing and stuff like that so I guess I'm I guess one of the questions I have is um how much time does the department think it will take to get this bylaw into anything that could be reasonably enforced because like I said, I'm, I'm not sure it, it there's, I think that I, I don't know how I would actually make a determination if a project was proposed under this bylaw as to whether it complies with the bylaw or not. And so how long does it think, how much, how much work does the department believe is needed on this bylaw before we could even bring it to hearing. Chris Prescott. So by the department, I assume you're meaning the conservation and development department. Yeah. Um, so I guess I would like to say that we already have a good process for reviewing solar installations. Um, we've reviewed about five of them and I think four of them have been built and there's still one under construction. Um, so I feel like the Zoning Board of Appeals, you know, does a pretty good job with this right now. Um, they have said through their chairperson, Steve Judge, that they would like to have some guidance and that's what this um, bylaw could offer them. Um, but they have pretty stringent submittal requirements and they have a really good set of rules and regulations and they work alongside the conservation commission and in fact on this certain project that is still before both groups they're you know kind of going in tandem um working on this project so i think that's a roundabout way of saying i feel like we're sort of okay as we are 
um, and that this bylaw is going to add uh, value, I think, in certain places where things might not be as clear. But um, the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, you know, does many of the things that are talked about in the bylaw um, and puts conditions on installations that reflect a lot of this material. So I don't, I don't personally think, I mean, I think that the bylaw is too long. It's got too much in it, too many requirements for submittal that are all already duplicated duplicated in the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals and Planning Board Rules and Regulations. So some of that could be cut out. Um, I think it certainly could be shortened and made more succinct. Um, but I think in the end, it's going to be useful. How long will it take? Um, gee, we thought it was going to take, I don't know, Stephanie and I thought it was going to take uh, nine months to a year to get um, the Solar Bother Working Group on the same page. Um, so it took 18 months. So I really can't predict how long it's going to take. And it sort of depends on the differences of opinion that people have. And that was one of the things that kind of drove the discussion with the Solar Bylaw Working Group. There were some people who felt very protective of the environment and really, you know, wanted to be very limiting on where solar installations could go. There were other people who felt very clearly that we need more solar installations we we can't you know worry too much about where they're going to go and we just need to promote them so there was constant um tension and discussion among those groups and i think that kind of prolonged the discussion so i think if this group um reflects that type of tension it could take a long time if this group is more um unified in its goals or its concerns, it probably won't take so long. So I guess that's kind of a roundabout way of saying it depends. Thank you. Stephanie Ciccarello. Thank you. Um, I would also add that one of the things that prolonged our process was also the desire to have expert testimony uh, around certain aspects of the development of the bylaw. And so that added quite a bit of time. Um, and I will say, I know that's come up. I, I do want to mention that those are recorded. Those sessions are recorded. And you do have a summary document that was submitted to the town manager from the chair, Chris Breshtrip and myself, that actually has the names and the dates of when they provided expert testimony. And so you could, any of the members could refer to that if, if you so desired in this process, um, rather than having to call people back in. I think there's a lot of information provided there that could save time. Um, also, I want to also uh, reiterate something that Chris said in terms of the length of this document. It reads more like regulations rather than a bylaw. And I think that's you know something that needs to be addressed. I am, and it might be a sort of lack of understanding the language of bylaws, but, um, I think it could be thinned, you know, to be more sort of general and referencing rather than very, very specific as it is in several places. Um, so, uh, and I think some of that came from recommendations from outside um, the group as well. And, and those probably could be edited in quite extensively. Thank you. Dave, you have your hand up too. Yeah, thanks, Pam. Um, echoing everything that Christine and, and Stephanie said, I just wanted to add something to the response. Um, I, Mandy, I think I think you bring up some very important points. You know, what? How much staff time is this going to take? How much time does the CRC and the council want to spend on this? Um, and I just wanted to reference. Um, there was mention of tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, for those folks who don't know, in the audience. There's a council retreat talking about the town manager's goals. And one of the goals has to do, many of the goals have to do with sustainability and solar bylaw is referenced in those goals. So Paul and I have had a couple of conversations about this. Clearly, um, you know, Christine mentioned the confidence we have in our current process with the ZBA, with the CONCOM, but at the same time, you know, many, many people spent 18 months working on this. 
Um, I think Christine and, and Stephanie and conversations we've had clearly pointed out to me that they know when this was presented to the council, it needed a lot more work. And, and I liked what Stephanie just said, that it it reads a little more like regulation than bylaw. So I think it's a good conversation to have with the full council. What does what what level of priority does the full council put on this work? And then Paul can also, through staff, the three of us, really meet the council at some point and say, okay, what level of priority do we put on this? Clearly, it is many, many months of work ahead of us if we want to perfect this, this bylaw. So uh, if we're going to do it, we need to roll up our sleeves and and uh, do it. But there are many other priorities, as as um, Councillor Haneke pointed out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to address a different issue. So if Jennifer is still talking uh, about um, time and things like that, I'd rather have you go first. Hey, yeah, I just wanted to ask, I mean, would it change how we do our work if we were to separate the bylaw from regulations? I mean, a bit like we did with the nuisance. I'm mean, not the nuisance, the a rental property bylaw. So that's just a question. I mean, does, could this document be separated out? I mean, could we have a bylaw and then pull out what would be regulations? Does that make sense? Or is, is that a question for me? And any one of you who yes. Yeah, anyone. I think that um, this, the planning board rules and regulations and the zoning bylaw rules and regulations already have a lot of um, requirements in them for submittals and different things. And so some of that could be put in regulations. What that would mean is that um, the planning board and the zoning board of appeals would have to hold their own public hearings to revise their regulations, but they could certainly do that. So that that is certainly a way of um, making this bylaw less lengthy. Okay, thank you. I was gonna, can I follow up on that? So was there discussion within the working group of creating regulations at all? There was not, no. Um, I think we were so caught up with the topics that I mentioned, the farmland and forest protection that, you know, that was the really the focus of most of what they talked about. And so, you know, I feel like, um, well, I, I'll stop there. Yeah. Yeah, do you go ahead, go ahead. I, I have a couple of questions, but they have to do with the content. Okay, well, yeah, this one, I, I'm, you, say that the emphasis was on large uh, scale ground mounted solar installations as the groups worked on this. And I, from what I understand, there was also um, uh, on disagreements around forest protection. And some of the um, criticisms was since we cut land down, we cut forests down to build housing and things like that, uh, why can't we cut down forests for solar? And so, and I, I, from looking at the decarbonization roadmap and things like that, which talks about protecting the natural uh, working land um, I, and, and possible, Chris, changes in zoning <laughs> around uh, how building housing and su stuffing uh, building de more densely um, redevelopment of already uh, cleared land. It's a, I'm curious uh, about why there isn't real work around the forests uh, and and finding some kind of balance between the need for ground mounted solar and the need to protect forests, which according to the decarbonization roadmap and almost everything we've looked at, is is critical to our environment. So um, I'd love it if I could get some understanding about why uh, that's been overlooked in many ways. I, I don't think it was really overlooked. It was, we actually came up with language that would have required mitigation. So if you cut 
you know, 10 acres of forest, then you have to mitigate by preserving X amount of forest somewhere else, either on the same site or on land owned by the um, owner or, you know, in another town that's adjacent. And that um, idea was discussed for a long time. It was sort of a slightly toned down version of what Shootsbury and Pelham had. They had a four to one mitigation. I think we ended up with a two to one mitigation. But in the end, there was a vote taken among the members of the Solar Bala Working Group, and they decided that they didn't want to do that. They thought it was too limiting for um, for solar projects. And they also um, used the argument that you just referred to, Pat, which is that, you know, we cut trees to build houses. Um, how, you know, how can we say we can't cut trees to build solar? So it was a vote that was taken by the Solar Bylaw Working Group. You all are working on this bylaw. If that's something you want to put back into it, you can do that. So, you know, you're creating the bylaw that's actually going to go to town council. So it's kind of up to you to what you want to put in. This draft kind of gives you a framework for things that you might want to have in it. Um, but you don't have to stick exactly to the draft. Thank you. I I also had a couple, just a couple questions. Um, you mentioned the the GZ. Someone mentioned the GZA survey and the 500 responses. I and I wonder if you can point us to where that is actually available to look at. Um, and then the second item that someone mentioned was the interactive mapping tool, which I haven't bumped into yet um which would be oh oh you said it's under the sustainability website under report the, the sustainability dashboard so dashboard. both those items are included in the dashboard uh, i believe the gza solar assessment is under reports um and i think the mapping tool may be there as well um if you scroll it's basically just a list of reports with links. And if you scroll down, I believe the mapping tool is there. Um, it may be under renewable energy, but I'm pretty sure that it's under the reports. I, we tried to keep that all in one place. Okay. But and it's that all included, on the that included the, the responses from the public survey that was done as well? The solar assessment report includes the results of the survey responses. That's basically what the report is, is an assessment of the well, a summary of the assessment that was disseminated throughout the community. Christine. Yeah, I just like to make an observation. And the observation is that, and I and I don't think we should talk about, you know, one particular project um, because that project is in a public hearing, but I wanted to make the observation that people are not chomping at the bit or breaking down our doors to come in and build large-scale solar installations in Amherst. The one that we have right now was first proposed in, I think, 2021. And here it is 2024, and it's still going through its process. Um, so this process, the process of reviewing these things is very labor-intensive and lengthy. Um, that may be a reason why people aren't you know, flocking to Amherst to do these things. Um, they seem to be flocking to Hadley and other places that have more open land. Um, so I just wanted to note that I don't feel like we're under siege. Um, so we shouldn't feel like we're under siege about this topic. And I forget the other thing I was going to say, but just, you know, consider that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, Jennifer. Yeah, so I guess picking up on um, Chris just said, and in terms of the amount of time we as a committee, uh, maybe staff, when we're going to be discussing priorities tomorrow. So we do have to complete this bylaw, correct? I mean, so so how do we, I mean, we have to, <laughs> and it's going to, so I, I guess, you know, we can talk about how we want to organize it. And I know Pam's given it a lot of thought, whether it's going through the bylaw section by section or it's doing it topically, but we we do have to get bring this bylaw back to the council. And then I guess they'll refer it to the planning board and the conservation commission, then it'll come back to the council. But 
it it's here and we have to, right? We we don't we can't say, well, it's gonna take up too much time, so we can't do it this year. Andy. I would say that's certainly something we should discuss tomorrow in terms of what priorities are. Um I I'm not sure my answer to Jennifer's question would be yes, we have to do it. Um, given that the ZBA seems to be reviewing these projects pretty well right now. Um, but I, I wanted to ask a couple other, which is why I said we might have a lot of this discussion tomorrow about where does the council want the manager to focus the council's staff times on council priorities, which ones are higher priority than others, right? Especially since so many of them fall to our planning department. Um, did my question for uh, Christine and Stephanie, did the bylaw, the, did the working group look at and review other bylaws from the state? Um, in particular, and I have not actually looked at Douglas's bylaw, but in reading about 20 municipal law unit decisions about bylaws, it was one of the bylaws that was proposed in full and adopted in full at a town meeting that was a, um, that the attorney general said, except for one small issue in the bylaw, it could not, it approved the whole thing with some caution that that caution was cautionary basically for every single municipal law unit decision out there in the last two years um, of if this bylaw ends up um, resulting in, um, you know, uh, what did they, they tend to use? Um, if the bylaw provisions are used to deny solar projects or are otherwise applied in ways that make it impractical or uneconomical to build solar energy systems and related structures, such as structures that facilitate the collection of solar energy, such application would run a serious risk of violating 40A section three. Um, but that, that Douglas is on its face, and that's all the AG's office was looking at, found that it appeared to promote the use of solar energy systems. So I guess one of my questions is, did the Solar Bylaw Working Group look at other towns' bylaws and what of that language was incorporated into what we're looking at now? Or did we were we just drafting new language completely? And also, did the Solar Bylaw Working Group actually look at the municipal law unit decisions that are published that came, I know some of them came out, especially Shootsbury and Pelham after we had the bylaw in hand, um, but there were a whole lot that were out before that. So were those looked at and were was all of that concern from the AG considered or anything that they, the AG sort of passed muster on put into what we're looking at now? So we, um, we as staff looked at many bylaws um, that have been, you know, accepted. Um, Amherst is a city, so it does not have to present its bylaws to the AG's office. And if it were challenged, it would be more likely to be challenged in the court. Um, I think we have a pretty good idea of what can and can't be regulated. Um, we did speak with attorney Jonathan Murray twice during our process and we got advice from him about you know what we could and couldn't put in and he kind of steered us away from the idea of um, having this um, very large mitigation that I've talked about earlier where you know there was a four to one mitigation if you cut forest so he steered us away from that and I think that you know many members of the group heard what he had to say. Um, so I think we were pretty careful, and I I do not see anything in our bylaw that would prevent um, solar installations from being approved. But again, it hasn't been reviewed by KP Law in its entirety, and it was never approved. It was not reviewed by KP Law because it wasn't really finished until the end of 
October or maybe it was November 9th of 2023. Um, so yes, I, I understand the concerns that you have, Mandy. Um, I don't see anything in our bylaw that would really, you know, keep it from being um, a reasonable bylaw. Pat, you've got your hand up. Thank you. And like Jennifer, I feel very strongly that this needs to be worked on um, and be brought before the council, uh, particularly because we're being told, oh, well, we have good guidelines and the ZBA is doing a good job. And I remember back just a year or so ago when the ZBA was crying for uh, a solar bylaw um, and felt that they did not have all of the uh, information that they needed. And, and I want to give an example of a reason why we need to do this work, not just for the ZBA, but for the town's health and safety. Hickory Ridge, we know there is a solar installation going in there. And it consistently in the last few years have, has been flooding dramatically, making access almost impossible. And there's talk about battery storage being there. Therefore, and, and battery storage comes with complications, which can, uh, and there can be fires and things like that caused by um, batteries, just sort of spontaneously igniting, often in connection to water uh, infiltrating the battery storage system. So if we, if we have such wonderful guidelines, how come we have a site that is consistently flooding and, and poses, I think, a real danger to the community? So I feel very strongly that we need to be working on this bylaw. Dave, you've got your hand up. You might want to respond to the to, to the Hickory Ridge comment. Um, I may I may not. You know, Pat put that out there. I'm happy to have it just be out there. I think she raised some Im important points. Um, I was going to speak more to and and she referenced something that I think is important for the CRC and everyone to recognize too is that the you know, battery storage definitely does add a level of complexity to all of these projects. So our early projects in town um, were exclusively just solar panels. And so what we're seeing now, um, I think we've seen a 100% solar battery storage facility permitted out on Sunderland Road. And I think the boards and committees did a very nice job with that. Um, and then what we're also seeing, so what we're told by the industry is we'll, we probably won't see any projects that are simply solar panels. They'll all come with battery storage, and that has many benefits for us as consumers of electricity. What we're also seeing is some of those projects come back through the process and saying, we'd like to add battery storage. So I just want to put it put it out there that, you know, a good point was raised that you know, the kinds of projects we're seeing are more complex than they were a year ago, three years ago, five years ago, or more. I did also want to just put out, and, and I did meet with the, um, the Solar Bylaw Working Group to talk a little bit about forest protection and, and uh, farmland protection, and we'll get into this later, but I did want to just kind of put out there for consumption that it is interesting to think, you know, there's often comments some of them positive, some of them negative about how much land Amherst has protected, permanently protected, you know, through through various means. But in fact, you know, if we look at, we have thousands of acres of protected conservation land, thousands of acres of protected farmland, many of which are forested. And then we have hundreds of acres of water supply protection land. All of those acres are growing trees and we do, not no cutting, but virtually no forest management on the town lands. We are letting trees grow. So we'll get more into that as, as we go. But I just wanted to, it's important to think about that as we think about carbon sequestration. What is the town doing 
to sequester carbon on our public land, we're doing a lot. We're letting trees grow. We're, we're really not doing much active uh, forest land, uh, uh, or excuse me, uh, forest cutting, uh, harvesting. So we'll get more into that later. But I do think some of the issues around complexity of batter battery storage, you know, need to be considered as we, as we, as the council thinks about what level of priority this is. Thank you for that. Uh, I, had a, I had a question wondering if um, there was discussion, at least within the working group, of separating out the the battery storage as a bylaw. I've heard this mentioned a couple of times, or regulations and or a separate bylaw. Was there much discussion about that? And and I I realized that within what was provided us as a draft, there's very little there's very little on battery storage. Um, what was the conversation within the working group on that? Chris? Yes, at first um, we thought we would incorporate battery storage into our solar bylaw and we did to some degree. But later on, it became clear to me that we probably really needed a separate battery storage bylaw. So I did draft one, but the solar bylaw working group was not um, in business long enough to review the battery storage bylaw. But if you would like to have that, I can send it to um, Pam and she can distribute it to you if you're interested in that. I think that would I think that would affect how we craft the rest of it if we have a separate bylaw for battery storage. There are some references to battery storage in the bylaw that's been drafted, but it's not as full as it would have been if, if we had had this separate bylaw. So looking forward, um, um, I'm hearing that there might be some concern that this not be particularly a priority for both CRC and for town staff to spend a lot of time and energy on. Um, but in fact, we do, we do have it on our plate. Um, there was a moratorium of X number of hundreds of people who signed saying that we we either needed a moratorium or a or a bylaw to to sort of set the guidelines and 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 side side guards or whatever you call them um, for Amherst going forward. Um, as we come around in the discussion and we decide that it is a priority that it is something that we want to work for, I would like to have in mind um, how we might approach organizing it. And I think in the in the email that I sent to Christine, I had I had simply taken each of the sections that was listed in the draft bylaw, and from my own perspective and from from conversations, had identified the different departments and or um, committees and boards that might have had either experience with or um, some information on. The different topics like the submittal requirements that was listed, um, mentioned as being fairly redundant with what ZBA and 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 or planning board already adhere to, um, and and um, or design standards again what what is already on the books and what can be paired off um, or kept or enhanced. Um, there were some pretty pretty important sections in my in my mind, which is uh, section 1711, protection of drinking water supplies. I know a lot of the folks that are on the Northeast side of the town, it, it's a small percentage of the population here, but they they are on town well, or they're on private wells and, um, and do back up against areas that are potentially available for, um, for solar production. And what are the what are the setbacks? What are the, the drinking standards? And how do we how do we manage for that? So there are there are a number of groups that that could stand some staff input, um, and there are also some um, topics that certainly require and and ought to have input from different committees in town with. A vested interest. Um, 
Chris G, uh, we, Chris, Christine and I uh, did talk through what a logical time frame might be if we pursue that route. And I think it's worth talking about. Uh, we may have to adjust things if, if um, somehow the council itself doesn't feel that it's a high priority. Um, but we had we had looked at reaching out to the boards and committees in town via their staff liaisons. And oh, Stephanie was there, of course, and Jennifer was also there, and David was also there, just to talk through the impacts to staff. Uh, that we that we looked at reaching out to the different committees, different boards, and asking for feedback. Uh, within a, a couple of months, so toward the end of May, to try to get feedback from these different entities. Um, at that point, the, the CRC would have a tremendous amount of information to, to work through. It would have not only the draft bylaw that we have today, it would also have and has already all of the resources that have been provided us um, for reading, for you know, uh, consideration, um, and we would then have input from the staff and and committees to um, complete that that input. We could really max out on input, is what I'm trying to say, uh, Mandy. I think we need to know the outcome or an idea of tomorrow's discussion, potentially, of priorities. Um, but if that outcome keeps solar at a higher priority than the department drafting housing measures, or any other measures that might take department time, or if that outcome of that discussion results in the department being able to put both on the burner, as it were, and work on both or three or four things at a time. I, I just don't know what the department's capacity is. Um, I, While I don't object to the outline that was just outlined or the plan that was just outlined, we just heard both Christine and Stephanie say they think this could be shorter. They think this is much more written as regulations and not a bylaw. Um, and I would rather see us get a new draft of something that is closer to a bylaw before we start farming out this draft or a draft to other committees for comment. Um, I, I don't have a desire to utilize committee time on something that might look hugely different when we get rid of all of the regulations that are in a bylaw or when, when we potentially end up with a draft that looks more and is more like a bylaw than it is now. Um, I'd like to see a draft. Uh, this was extremely hard to read and part of why it was hard to read and understand is because there are certain parts of it where the requirements are listed like in four different locations, and I'm not sure which ones apply. Um, and I'd like to see it consolidated. You know, there are setback requirements in special requirements for ecosystem protection under forest lands. There are setback requirements under water supply protection. There are setback requirements under the dimensional regulation section. There are setback requirements in like five different on on so many different pages of this there are vegetation requirements on so many different pages that i don't know whether they're duplicative whether one goes over the other and i would love to see a bylaw before we really start talking and getting into the weeds of a bylaw if we are going to get into the weeds where we're not paging back and forth amongst 21 pages to find all of the different, say, setback requirements, where all of the setbacks are in the same section. Um, 
you know, where all of the vegetation requirements are in the same section, where all of the application requirements, if we're going to keep them in a bylaw and not put them in regulations, or if it's recommended to be in a bylaw, although I heard Christine say that that's more of something that the planning board or ZBA would put in regulations if they're going to stay here, where all of them are in the same section because right now they're not, where all of the reporting requirements are in the same section, along with what they need to include, because there were like seven different reporting requirements throughout this bylaw on seven different things, but on seven different pages in seven different sections that I couldn't even follow it um, of two did you have to report the same thing in three different reports on a yearly basis or a biannually? Yeah, like there's just a lot there that I think is duplicative and hard to manage that I'd, I'd prefer before we start asking for feedback from all of these different entities, which is important if we're going to go forward with this, that we have something that looks like or is closer to something that could reasonably have feedback um, in a meaningful manner versus, you know, I, I've got a marked up copy that's like all about, well, didn't you just discuss this three pages before? Which one actually applies? And how do they interact with each other? I'd, I'd rather, and, and I'm not sure how we could say discuss dimensional setbacks ourselves or that 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 section within one section when they're in six different sections, for example, although I'm slightly exaggerating as to where they are, but like, how, how do we even have that discussion when they are amongst seven, you know, three or four different parts of it? So I'd like to see something much more consolidated before we really start getting into the weeds. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of thinking out loud, but I mean, would it, and I don't know if we can, have a subcommittee, but I mean, to look, I mean, would it make sense? And I guess I'm really asking staff this to try and take this and pull out what would be the regulations. Like, it sounds like maybe we have, if we're going to, if this might work, have a solar bylaw, have regulations, and then have a battery storage bylaw. If that, I mean, could a, I don't know if we can have a subcommittee of two. I mean, does it make sense maybe working with, with one staff? to look at, and I don't know how, you know, could we just kind of pull out what would be the regs and what would be the bylaw and come back to the group and start looking at it that way, if that would be easier to kind of wrap our hands around. I'm going to look at Christine Breastrup since much of that would come to her, her desk. Um, I think it would be relatively easy to pull out things that are regulatory um, but that's not the only thing that makes this really long. Another aspect that makes it really long is that um, people who were in the solar bylaw working group felt very strongly that they needed to um, come up with um, kind of an inoculation for the bylaw from challenges. And um, if we said anything about um, certain you know, ways that solar could occur on farmland or forest, we needed to have um, fairly lengthy, strong statements about why we value farmland and forest and why we want to protect it. So a lot of the beginning of this bylaw is, you know, that type of material. It's like a defensive um, language in case someone were to come along and say, well, you know, you can't regulate um, solar on farmland. Well, already in the front, we've put it in all these reasons why we value farmland. And so that is supposed to be protective of our regulations. Um, so yes, there are a lot of things in here that are regulatory, but there is also a lot of defensive language to keep this bylaw from being subject to being um, overturned or uh, thrown out as a result of being too strict. So um, that's just one thing. Thank you. Uh, I'll go to Dave and then Stephanie. Yeah, very briefly. I just wanted to echo 
Mandy's concern. I, I really, I agree that I am concerned that putting out something at 20 plus pages that this group already is seeing needs some work. I guess I'm just questioning the wisdom, our collective wisdom of putting it out there to the CONCOM, Water Supply Protection, Board of Health, Planning Board, et cetera, for feedback when it, you know, when in all likelihood they're going to see many of the same things that concern us at this stage. So I, from an, uh, I'm not trying to slow anything down, but I actually think it would be more efficient if the CRC working with staff worked work this in committee right here for a while. And as we said, got it down to the bylaw components, separating out the regulatory components before we, you know, it's like having a draft and sending it out to a whole bunch of people and kind of writing by committee. It just worries me that we're going to send this out and it's not ready yet. And so we're, they're going to, those boards and committees are going to spin their wheels a little bit. We're going to get feedback that maybe we already know we need to work on. So I would rather see this group, the committee with staff support, work it before it goes out. So I'm, I'm just agreeing with Mandy about her concerns. Thank you. Happening. Thank you. Um, two points I wanted to make. One um, is that all of that language at the beginning was somewhat under the guidance of Jonathan Murray from KP Law, that in part because if the language was written too restrictively, it, it was something to reference to identify a community value. And again, this is where the community values piece came in, was to identify that in the beginning. So I just wanted to... Um, frame where that came from and why that's there. So I just wanted to say that. And then also, um, I do agree that, um, and I felt as we were working on this, that it was feeling more like regulations than a bylaw. So it would make, a. I agree with everything that Dave just said and what Mandy Joe said, that it would be so much easier for staff to work on something that was actually a bylaw um, and not this kind of mix of bylaw with regulations. Um, I think that would just make a lot more sense because otherwise I feel that there'd be a lot of redlining um, and people pulling them out and saying the same things that we're saying. So I was gonna ask, I was gonna ask if if staff, and I've heard I've heard now a couple of people say that maybe the CRC should work on this, pare it down and and send it back to the staff for working on. Um, I was going to actually switch that around and ask if staff was interested and and had time to actually do that since you were the ones with the expertise in many of the topics and categories that we're talking about. I, I do I do understand completely um, the concern about sending something out that's that's bulky and and not not pared down i mean it's 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 been packed with as much stuff as was assembled by the working group things that may or may not actually end up in an actual bylaw um and i and i totally get that you don't necessarily want to send that off to concom or planning board in this shape um on the other hand it feels important to get some input from these groups um, so that we have knowledge of what to um, what to keep in the packing and what to and what to unpack and dis and discard. Um, just quickly though the the other thing I was thinking about the 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 topics such as community values um, it's it's interesting to me that, that it was felt that it would be useful in an actual bylaw. I don't know that I've ever seen bylaws with that kind of language in it, that it's the kind of thing that I guess I would feel would go in a report, even though once something's submitted and, and approved, it's like you never you never marry those two things back up again. You never marry the report with the with the bylaw, but but I but I think it it seems that that's kind of where you would handle that sort of material. Pat. 
Thank you. I think there's a lot of good stuff in here in this uh, bylaw, um, this mesh of bylaw and regulation. And like you, Pam, I'd like to see uh, it echo or do, in a sense duplicate what we've done for rental res registration where there's the bylaw and there are the regs. I don't think we should just pull the regs out and not deal with them. Um, and I like Jennifer's idea of a subcommittee of this committee <laughs> uh, meeting uh, to, to work on this somewhat and, uh, and whether or not we could have that subcommittee of two people work with one of the staff to do this um, in some way so it doesn't take everybody all of the time. Uh, I'm going to remind us as a CRC that if we formally create a subcommittee or any type of informal committee where we're saying assigning people to go work on something and work together, it is a public body that must notice public meetings and meet in public. And if there are only two, those individuals can never talk on their own together about the bylaw, not in a public meeting. <laughs> so I think the most efficient would be, and again, this is why I caution, I'd like to wait until for, for assigning anything or saying anything formally until after tomorrow when we get a better idea of where the whole council is on priorities for the manager and staff time. Um, but that it would be staff, it would be most efficient for staff to bring drafts back to CRC for discussion. The other thing I wanted to say about regulations, I think Christine hinted on that. Unlike rental registration that is in a general bylaw that we were creating and assigning who gets to do regulations for, zoning bylaws have already assigned who does regulations to implement zoning bylaws, and it is not the council. It is each individual body, the ZBA and the planning board. And so I would be very cautious and hesitant as a counselor to be drafting regulations that the council does not have any right to pass. Um, that does not mean we could urge each board to adopt appropriate regulations to implement any solar bylaw we might adopt, but I would be hesitant to, as a council, spend, as a committee of the council, spend a lot of time on the regulations when the council has no authority to adopt those regulations. Jennifer. And I guess I withdraw my suggestion to separate out the bylaw and they, I mean, the regulations have to stay in the bylaw because that's the only way we can pass them. So there it goes. <laughs> that would have saved me a lot of, save us a lot of time. <laughs> but we can consolidate them, et cetera. Yeah. So uh, on that note though, Mandy, if, if, if regulations were, were built, uh, to it doesn't mean that the council necessarily has to adopt them, obviously. So it would be something that could be offered up to uh, the entity that would be enforcing it, ZBA, and let them mull it over and adopt it themselves. Mandy. I think it would be presumptuous of us to create regulations and hand that to a body that has already adopted regulations for their governing without asking them first whether they would like us to do so. <laughs> um, um, because maybe they want to do it on their own, um, right? Maybe they would take our help, but I would be hesitant as a committee member to do anything like that before asking that body if they wanted us to do that. And you still need the solar bylaw first. Um, and so if we're going to do this, 
the time, our time should be spent on the bylaw, not on the regulations. And I would fight a lot back and say, it's inappropriate to put regulations in a bylaw. Jennifer. Okay, so for my own edification, I probably need to read through and become clearer on what is a regulate, you know, what in this substantively is a regulation versus the bylaw, because it sounds like we want to have, we would want to have as much in here as we think is important since we, you know, we can't assume that, oh, this is, you know, let, let's leave out these regulations now because the um, permit granting authority may or may not want to adopt those regulations. So we better have in our bylaw everything we, we think needs to be there. Christine. Um, I would like to um, have an opportunity to meet with one member of this group to get a sense of what um, might be considered regulations versus bylaw. And I would invite Mandy to meet with me to talk about that, if that would be appropriate for the rest of you, if you would agree to that. Mandy, are you willing? Knowing that it's a high priority. I wouldn't agree with the high priority until tomorrow when we see what the whole 13 counselors say. Um, but um, no, I I think Christine knows that I am always willing to meet with the planning department about zoning. Um, and, and this is a zoning bylaw, um, whether or not uh, on on whatever part of zoning um, that that if if if. Christine or anyone in the department reaches out and asks to meet to discuss, I'm always willing to do so. Thank so you. I, may I just say something? I think that the way, you know, there's kind of like a an invisible wall between staff and council members. So I think that having an agreement from this committee that Mandy could meet with me would go a long way to kind of piercing that wall rather than having me just call Mandy up one day and say, hey, Mandy, you want to come over and meet about this bylaw? <laughs> so uh, Mandy, I know, wants to hear from the retreat what the results of that are about the priorities. But then I think, you know, she's got a really good sense of the difference between a bylaw and a regulation and could help us to sort through that. and you know, help to pare this thing down. So with your blessing after tomorrow night, um, if this is still a priority, I would be I would be happy to meet with Mandy to do that. Um, but it would I feel like it would need to have the blessing of this group. Then let's take a straw poll. How many people support Mandy um, sitting down well, to talk? Hold on. I, I just want I don't know whether Dave was going to say the same thing. I worry about a formal blessing creates a subcommittee. I'm oh, not just, just one. I'm, I'm I, I don't know. I, and we don't have Athena here to help us with that. That that's why I worded my response how I worded it, because I'm I I don't want this committee to ant um, accidentally create a subcommittee that puts us in violation of open meeting law. I'm going to take a hand vote. If no, people... wait. Dave is trying Dave. to raise his hand. Dave, Dave, you're muted. Thank you. Yeah. I guess I'm just wondering. I mean, this is not a long-term assignment. This is really kind of one meeting. So I guess the formality of this, it seems just too formal to me. I don't think we, I would recommend you don't need a vote or anything to really say, this is one meeting for Chris and Mandy to spend an hour together and and tease apart, you know, uh, the, the 20 some odd pages and, and really kind of start to get some categories of what falls in bylaw, what, what, falls maybe in regulation and then are there areas of question so i'm just 
cautioning to say, let's not make it too formal. That wasn't the reason I was raising my hand, but I'll, I'll turn it back over to you, Pam, if you could recognize me in a moment. I'll, I'll recognize you again. I was going to, this was sort of a tongue in cheek, you know, a show of hands saying we all support it, this happening. That gives Chris some cover. So if someone scolds her for, for going directly and talking to counselors, we, we encouraged it at her request to speed up the process and make it more efficient. We gave her our blessing. <laughs> so I think, I think you've been blessed. David, your, your hand is up. Yeah, a couple of things I just wanted to add, notwithstanding the discussion tomorrow night, and I actually, I think tomorrow night at the retreat is important, but I think there's gonna be a lot of discussions like this among and between the council members and the manager as to how many things you know we we would like as a community to get moving, accomplished, completed by the end of this year, because it's really focused on the town manager's goals between now and 1231-24, which isn't very long from now. Um, but notwithstanding that conversation, um, two things I wanted to say. I think there's also a discussion to be had among this group. What are CRC's priorities? You know, because you will see on the town manager's list other things that you all, uh, uh, other things that will likely come to you and through you. Um, zoning related to uh, higher density in village centers, uh, uh, you know, perhaps in, on East Village Center or University Drive as the planning board is, is talking about. So I think that's part of the equation. It's not just what does town staff have the bandwidth for, but it's also what you all have the bandwidth for. The other thing I think just to add to the, the equation tomorrow night is, I think there are ways to work on things at a pace. So we might pace ourselves differently for one zoning uh, uh, one zoning process versus another. And that's where the prioritization. So um, for instance, you know, I would look at these and say, well, I know things we're gonna talk about tomorrow night. One is the solar bylaw uh, zoning. The other is um, just as I mentioned, uh, density, uh, say an overlay district on University Drive that the planning board has been talking about. I see both of those as, uh, as important for the town to work on, but maybe our pacing is different with one than the other. And we're working on them simultaneously, but it may not be every two weeks that you meet with Stephanie and, and Chris or Rob and Nate Malloy or however this shakes out. So I, I would just ask you to think about that pacing for staff, but also for yourselves. Um, so those were the two things I wanted to just put out there. I don't think these things have to be mutual excuse, exclusive. We may say um, some of this, you know, clearly might not get done in 2024. It's going to bleed into 25 in some way, shape, or form. So. Appreciate that. Thank you. Any other comments? So we have a, we have a very tentative and very limited scope looking forward here. Uh, what we have agreed so far is simply that there would at least be a um, a discussion to to identify those pieces that might be regulation versus bylaw. Um, there is a great deal of information in our packet that has been provided. Um, at some point as we go forward. I think it would be then important to seek pretty pretty substantial pretty substantial input from certainly town staff, and I'm thinking specifically um, planning, sustainability, fire, uh, concom, or wet excuse me wetlands administrator. That these are folks that whatever package comes out of this um, will we'll ought to have a say in, in some of the, the detailing of it. And I don't want to ask for that assistance at this point because there doesn't seem to be clear consensus that, that that's the route that we should take right now. Um, 
any other thoughts on structuring without, I'll, I'll come to Chris in just a second, without um, uh, dropping this and, and letting it lag for too long? Chris. I just wanted to suggest that you also, when you get back together again to talk about the solar bylaw, that you have a conversation about um, your priorities as far as um, encouraging solar installations um, in support of action against climate change versus um, your position on um, protecting the environment. And I think, you know, it's not either or, but it's very hard to have a discussion when, you know, some people in the group are very adamantly in support of the more solar, the better, put it wherever it can go. You know, this is really important versus we don't want to cut forests or farms or put it anywhere except in a, you know, in a former um, gravel pit or someplace. So I think you should have that discussion about, you know, what are your um, values as far as these things go, because it will influence um, the outcome of this. You know, is are you trying to regulate and limit solar power um, like some cities and towns do, or are you trying to encourage it um, as a countermeasure to climate change? Thank you. Good food for thought. Pat, you have your hand up. Thank you. Uh, I want to encourage solar. Um, I'm not about ending solar early. Uh, I am concerned that we that a lot and uh, not enough attention has been spent by this group, not not CRC, but the Solar Bylaw Working Group, on um, other alternatives to putting it in forest, et cetera. Um, and if you look at any of the state mandates, if you look at the decarbonization roadmap, they talk about the importance of sequestration. So, and I'm not even saying we shouldn't put some in some in forests. So uh, don't hear that. People like to hear that. But what I am saying is that we, as this group and this bylaw should also be addressing issues about um, where where we can additionally put solar installation uh, and how we would fund that, how we can make it accessible to as many people in town as possible uh, and really begin to look at zoning, even though the planning board doesn't like anybody except themselves to deal with zoning. Uh, we need to look at density and uh, how, you know, clustering development and stuff like that. And some of that has been looked at, but we really need to look at uh, how we build, what we do we zone for duplexes and triplexes, which take up less land, which uh, use less materials that are easy to heat and et cetera, et cetera. And that's something that the planning board and the planning department have been incredibly resistant to, but we need, so we need, this is a, this is not, this is so interconnected. And I, I really, we really need to look at other aspects that the committee has not paid attention to, to see what kind of regulation or what we can do to support um, other kinds of um, solar development, whether or not anything that is built has to have canopies over their parking lots, things like that. We need to look at that too. And it's a shame that the emphasis stayed where it was in this group as it could have been much broader and and richer whine and complain sorry sorry about that but, but you're not complaining yeah. um interestingly it occurs to me that that um parcels of land that are good for housing development are also good for solar development and at that at some point we we will end up having to choose um, perhaps between those, um, or 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 make sure as as you just said that it's layered on top of whatever gets built. If you're gonna if you're gonna cover the the land with impervious, then add the solar to it to capture both. So um, it feels like we sort of run this conversation down. 
and uh, I don't like leaving it at this point because I I feel like we I wanted to come out of this with sort of a strategy to to get in, information flowing and moving. Um, we will have a meeting uh, tomorrow night, and I would plan then as far as a um, as far as a next agenda preview beyond April 2, which is now the DBA interviews and deliberation, um, I think we need to come back with some, some consideration of um, how we wanna move forward on this and do a lot of reading. That's your homework assignment. Jennifer. And um, Councillor Haneke and Chris Brestrop will probably have had their conversation. I hope that would be great. By the next meeting with some. Which is, hold on, the next meeting is? Well, the April 9th. April 9th. Mandy, will you be at that meeting, do you think? If not, we would put it put it to a different. Well, we wouldn't meet again until April 30th. It would be, it would be, it would be helpful to have some feedback. I am unsure whether I'll be at the ninth right now. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough, Dave. Uh, yes, ma'am. So yeah, I was going to suggest. I mean, that meeting um, based on Mandy's schedule and Chris's, they can connect. I think you and I can connect. The staff liaison working with the chair, I can connect with you after tomorrow night's meeting. Maybe not tomorrow night, but in the days following tomorrow. Um, to see the outcome of that discussion. And then, you know, we could chart a path forward with regard to your next agenda. Um, and we could incorporate what Chris and Mandy work on and then, you know, form an agenda, whether it be on the 9th or the meeting after that, you know, what what is the path forward for this and how kind of aggressively or how actively the, the, the council and CRC uh, with staff support are gonna take it on. So I think we have a little time actually after the retreat to figure that out. Yeah. And yeah. we can, bring, we can bring, you can bring the feedback, you and other counselors from the retreat to that meeting as well to share with the public. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So another, another a future topic, another um, CRC, future agenda item is in fact to bring up the housing productive production plan and to start thinking about that. And are there other tools that uh, that we want to pursue um, to help see some of that come to fruition? Um, so we certainly aren't lacking for things, but but this is clearly front and foremost at the moment. Pat. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I know that Martha Hanner would be happy to speak with people, but I think, you know, there are, there are what, seven or eight me members of that committee, and I have a feeling uh, that they would be willing to talk with individual counselors um, about issue, you know, as you're reading and as things come up, uh, it would be important and possibly to reach out to them informally uh, as individual counselors. That's a great idea, just to get get your own heads organized on how they, what they were thinking as they developed it. Yeah, yeah, good idea, good idea. Um, I have no announcements. I have no minutes, and I have no items that were uh, anticipated forty eight hours in advance. Is there anything else anyone wants to add before we? agree to adjourn. Jennifer. No, just to remember that we're meeting again a week from tonight. I'll, I'll send out a reminder. I, Athena will. Yeah. Uh, that brings up a point. Dave, do you know if um, if you are available on the second to host that meeting? Or is that something that maybe we, it's not going to be a public meeting. It's, 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 there's no, I mean, people can attend, but there's no public um, comment period. Is that something that could be set up and one of us could manage and host it? Yeah, Will, you and I should talk later this week. I did speak briefly with Athena about it, and and I think she volunteered me. 
So we'll we'll work on we'll work on on that for uh, for the for, what is that? That's a Tuesday, right? Another Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah, yeah. We'll work on that. And it is likely to be a good hour and a half to two. Mm -hmm. Can staff set us up and then get off? And I wondered. Yeah. Yeah. Em, I had one other question. I know you took public comment at the beginning. I didn't know whether, based on the conversation you've had, whether you would take any more tonight or or not. I'm willing, absolutely. If folks, is there anyone in the audience that uh, is interested in weighing in on this subject? We have seven attendees. I'm not seeing any hands go up. I think this is just an opener for us, and um, we will certainly have more. So I would I would suggest if people are trying to follow this that you look at the um, the CRC agendas, and I'll try to get those agendas posted as early as I can, hopefully a week ahead of time, so that you have a sense of what's actually on that agenda and can participate that way. Thank you. Yeah, it, it also seems like we need to pay attention to what's happening in the Attorney General's office around this issue. That's going to be critical for our work. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We have and we have Mandy watching that. Woohoo. She's our she's our ears on the ground, if that's the phrase. Okay, folks, I think I think we've run it to the ground. Um, I would like to adjourn the meeting. It is at 8.02. Thank you. And thank you so much, Steph. Oh, hold on, Jennifer. You have to unmute. Do we have to vote now to adjourn? Oh, God. No. 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 Or just the, the council does, I think. It, the I council think, will from now on, yes. Like the committees don't. Just, okay, just, never mind. Just say without objection and pause, we are adjourned. <laughs> without objection, pause. I'm sorry. We are. That, that's a formality, but, but I think the chair can adjourn at any time, right? Sorry. <laughs> Good night. Good night, yeah. Good night. Thank you. Adjourned. Thanks. Rebecca. Thank you, Stephanie. I'll I'll text you. I'll text you. Okay. <laughs>